But what you said was, most people don't even know what feeling great feels like. That's a fascinating comment. Yeah. Would you elaborate on that, please? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I say that based on my own experience and on my experience of, of working with people and, and things that I see and, and hear and observe. Um, you know, I used to struggle a lot with suboptimal health, like mental health, physical health. And I didn't, it wasn't until I resolved all of those issues and started to feel great that I actually realized what it felt like because I, I, for such a long time, you know, most people as they go through their lives, they just gradually start to feel less and less great. Mm. You know, like the modern lives that we have are impacting us in, in our physical health and also our mental health. So we start to get all these little symptoms and we just don't know how it feels to have amazing energy and to have clear you know clear thinking and to you know and to just have energy flowing through our body and feel amazing like most people just take i hear lots of comments of people saying oh you know i'm knackered but that's just normal or well i feel a bit crap but that's just normal and it's become i feel this normalized thing where it's not the standard to feel amazing mm. and when you do make certain changes that cre create the feeling of health and create the feeling of like just feeling really really good you suddenly realize how crap you must have felt before most of us never learned how to train our brains which is why most of us needlessly settle struggle and worse suffer my name is chris doris and i want to make brain training mainstream this is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. Hey guys, welcome back to Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. Our guest today is Laura Bolton, who is a health and life coach. I met Laura 15 months ago at an event in Sardinia. Italy. It was um, an A-Fest event. <clears throat> A-Fest, the A stands for awesomeness, <laughs> which is um, an event that um, in a, invites a few hundred uh, international uh, folks from all over the world who are um, interested in making a difference. So globally conscious difference makers. And, you know, Laura is, um, is the host of a new podcast which is amazing. You're probably going to hear me say that a whole bunch of times because I am blown away by the the level of thoroughness and preparation that she must put into that because of the amount of data and information that's so fascinating and useful and practical is is, is, is over, overwhelming. Like I have to pause, play, pause, play. So her podcast is called the Be More Human Podcast, High Performance Health for Impact Driven People. And uh, I'm, I'm going to ask her all about that, uh, particularly about one episode, the fifth. Uh, so currently, she's got six episodes. The fifth one is on stress, and I really want to pick her brain about. She talks about three levels, three categories of stress, right, which is, of course, like fundamental to, to mental toughness is, is how to stop creating stress for herself. And she says that. She says uh, stress doesn't happen to us. It happens within us, right? And uh, the three categories are psychological stress, physical stress, and chemical stress. So I want to ask her to elaborate on that. And I also want to talk to her. She is from London. Wait till you hear her voice. It's, it's amazing. I could just listen to her podcast all day long just because of how in incredibly cool her voice is. Uh, putting aside all the incredible wisdom <laughs> and value. She is um, you know, born and raised in London, England and um, has lived in a couple other places around the world and then returned to England. But now, recently, uh, I don't remember exactly how long, but fairly recently, like within a few months, I'm sure, up and moved to Bali uh, because she felt it. I haven't talked to her in detail about that. In fact, I haven't talked to her in 15 months, <laughs> except for a few exchanges uh, on um, messaging. So looking forward to hearing uh, from her. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. So let's go find her. She's waiting for us. Let's see where Miss Laura Bolton is. <laughs> There she is, Laura Bolton. 
And Hello. Lord laughs. Hello. I'll tell you what. I, I needed some damn mental toughness getting this whole thing scheduled up. <laughs> I mean, and you know, and I'm not putting it on you. I, I was I screwed up the times a couple times. <laughs> You know, I guess there I know. Are... we just couldn't quite get there, could we? But we're here now. <laughs> we are here now, and, and which is which is so amazing, right? Because he, here I am in Arizona, in the United States, and there you are in Bali. Yes, Bali. I am in, in a New... rice field. In a rice <laughs> field. <laughs> Where moments ago there was a torrential downpour, and I can I hope that we get a little bit more. I'd love to hear that. Even it may come back. It's been I, on and off um, all all morning, so okay, you may well, get a well, surprise. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. So there are uh, there are a million things that I would love to discuss with you, but I've I've painstakingly narrowed it down to two subjects, and one mm -hmm. uh, I did mention to you before. The other I haven't. The, the, the first one is is one of the thing the things that it, it, one of the things that initially had me think I really would love to have Laura on the Tough Talk show. And, and it's your recent move there from your home in London. Yes. Across the planet. Right? <laughs> and so now, now, yeah. Now, did you say that The Alchemist is your favorite book or is one of your favorite books? Oh, it's so, with books. It's so difficult to decide, isn't it? I mean, there's so many amazing okay, books, sure, but it's certainly what it's certainly one of my like. It's certainly, yeah, potentially my. my I couldn't remember that. That, that, that okay. So, but uh, because you're you're kind of living like that right now, you're you're living that story a bit. So that's one <laughs> thing that I want to talk about with you is that that move and all the story around that. Like, why, why there. Uh, was it scary? Did you did like did you wait a while before you were able to do that and, and all that stuff? Uh -huh. Because be, and because I believe that that story is going to be very valuable valuable for people that have a, a big strong desire but might seem a little outlandish or impractical or maybe even impossible for them. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's a beautiful thing to talk about to empower people to stop waiting. So there's that, and then then the other thing is stress. You have an I'm gonna. I'm totally going to do a commercial for you right now. Okay. <laughs> because I have to. You are brilliant. And you are so prepared. Folks, please check out Laura's new podcast, which is entitled, I want to make sure I get it right, Be, the Be More Human Right? Yeah, Be More Human podcast. Yeah. Be More Human podcast, high performance health for impact driven people. And you've got six episodes up now. So you're far, fit. yes. The, so far, yeah. And yeah, you're crushing it. And everyone, <laughs> I mean, I, you don't even have to answer this, but I, I mean, I am blown away at the, at the amount of information that is included in each one. Mm -hmm. To the point, and so thank God you use the technology that has a pause button and a rewind fifteen seconds and a, and a fast forward thirty seconds button because I'm <laughs> using. Because I'm like, oh, uh -huh. wait, wait, what was that? What was that? Yeah, wait, there was six. Th no, it was a five thing. What was that thing? And then, and and what you said. So in the, uh, and we'll we'll get back to this later. But for, uh, for example, one of the things that I needed to pause and go back and listen to again uh, was that you said ninety percent of serotonin is is created in the gut. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah. 90% yeah. of the that's a, see, that blows my mind, and I need to learn these things. So anyway, folks, yeah. listen, please. Before we even go any further, I want to make sure. Where do people go to find your podcast? Uh, well, it's on iTunes. Hmm. And um, so that's probably the easiest way um, to find it. If you just type in Be More Human into into iTunes, it will it will come up, and then there's an option, I believe, if you're not on um, iPhone, to to actually go onto the main website, like the Android or whatever. I'm not really sure because I have iPhone, so I don't really know how it works. But I think there's options to go onto different look okay. at it on different um, means, and it will also be go. I will also be um, posting it onto very shortly onto the website. Oh, perfect! Um, okay. yeah, so that people can amazing also. So thank you for all, all that work. I mean, I, I've, uh, I don't know how many hours in the past couple of weeks I've spent listening. Um, I mean, cumulatively, if you add up all six, it's only probably a couple or three hours long, all of it. But yeah. 
but it's like it's the kind of podcast where I, you, when you start listening I, I lose track of time and I have to re-listen to it in order to get it all so you are such an incredible wealth of information um so way to go thank and, you yeah you are welcome that is well deserved and well-earned compliment so there's something that i wanted to ask you about before we get to those first two those two subjects so which is and i think it appeared in your first episode right the, the very first podcast that you did i'm not sure and it doesn't really matter but what you said was most people don't even know what feeling great feels like that's a fascinating comment. Yeah. Would you elaborate on that, please? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I say that based on my own experience and on my experience of, of working with people and, and things that I see and, and hear and observe. Um, you know, I used to struggle a lot with suboptimal health, like mental health, physical health, and I didn't, it wasn't until I, resolved all of those issues and started to feel great that I actually realized what it felt like because I, I for such a long time you know most people as they go through their lives they just gradually start to feel less and less great mm. you know like the modern lives that we have are impacting us in in our physical health and also our mental health so we start to get all these little symptoms and we just don't know how it feels to have amazing energy and to have clear you know clear thinking and to you know and to just have energy flowing through our body and feel amazing like most people just take I hear lots of comments of people saying oh you know I'm knackered but that's just normal or well I feel a bit crap but that's just normal and it's become I feel this normalized thing where it's not the standard to feel amazing Mm. and when you do make certain changes that cre create the feeling of health and create the feeling of like just feeling really really good you suddenly realize how crap you must have felt before but when you're in it you don't necessarily notice it you're, you're just in it it's just become it becomes your new normal mm. and so i genuinely think that um, most people don't realize how good they can actually feel because they haven't experienced it yeah. yet. So then, um, so, so then they would need someone like you <laughs> to alert them to say, Hey, by the way, you probably think you feel normal, but you don't. So let's take a look yes. at what you said. Let's take a look at your, your, your physical well-being, your mental well-being, your emotional well-being, your spiritual yeah. well-being. You address all of those. Yeah. Right. So and and it's all you, connected. It's all inextricably connected, right? Instantly and inextricably connected. And you're you make yeah. that abundantly clear through your work and through your writing and through your, your um, speaking, your podcast. Now you refer to yourself, and I mentioned this in the intro, but I want to make sure that it's accurate. And I know that you also said in your somewhere in one in your bio, like your about me stuff, that you're not really into labels. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I realize they're necessary sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's like, so what are you, what, what do we call are you? You're a health. It says on your website that you're a health, health and life coach. Yeah. I mean, that's how I, if I have to give it a label, that's yeah. how I would label it. But essentially what I do is I, I help people to overcome limitations to, to break free from limitations that are holding them back. And that can be physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. It's, it's the whole it's the whole lot and you know any aspect of health that is holding you back so it could be anything from not sleeping very well not having not having energy or it could be your mood it could be dealing with too much stress so many different things but all of those things hold us back from being our best self and from performing at our best so if we can work on that we can live our life in the way that we want to live it and make the impact that we want to make you must do an enormous amount of reading <laughs> right because i mean you can just put one of those you can <laughs> uh, right because i mean like you know i'm the mental coach and i that's my niche that's the thing i study the mind i study the mind i study the mind i don't know jack about nutrition but you know not you know all about nutrition you know about 
physical well-being. You know, I mean, you're even the, your second, I think, episode was on how to travel and like, you know, avoid jet lag. And <laughs> you know, it's like you just know so much about so much that you must be just constantly studying. And you I may- am. I have a very curious mind, and yeah. it it it's become such it's such a passion for me that. And I know that you will understand when I say this, but it's, it doesn't even feel like work to me. It's just my life. And, 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 and so when I see a new podcast from somebody else where I'm going to learn something new, or if I see a book or an article or a video, I just inhale it. Like I just absorb it. And I, and I, and I want to, I, I'm just forever learning. I don't think we can ever stop learning. That's beautiful. All right. So let's talk about Bali. Why? What happened? <laughs> no, you, still... you were you were born you know you're you were born and raised in london yeah yes and that's yes where i you was spent... born and raised in london did you did i read somewhere that you lived in spain and south africa yes so um i i grew up in london yeah and i then when i went to university i went to live in the middle of england in a place called leamington spa which is near uh, stratford shakespeare's town um mm. and i was there for 15 years and then after that i ended up spending some time living yes in south africa so in cape town yeah. and then also in southern spain in tarifa where interestingly the alchemist is partly based Oh, so um just coincidentally um so yes i was spending some time there and then i came actually came back to the uk a couple of years ago so i've been in the uk for a couple of years now i guess and then now bali now bali so tell us about bali why hmm. i had been feeling in when I was in London, I had just been feeling this. It's not a logical thing, so it wasn't a thing in the mind. It was more something in my heart. Like mm-hmm. it, I refer to it as like a. It was like a pull, like a calling. There was just this voice within me, that was saying, "Go to Bali," <laughs> and it's very interesting because when you speak to many people who are also here. They all say the same thing. They say, I just got this calling. Bali just called me. Um, it's had you really ever been strange, there? but had you ever visited Bali prior to this? I was here 17 years ago on a one week holiday. Okay. <laughs> so a very long time yeah. ago. Okay. And I just kept getting this feeling that I should go to Bali. And I just and I I've, I've become very good at tapping into my feelings and tapping into my intuition and tapping into my, what my heart wants. And it just felt like I wasn't meant to be in London. There was a feeling of, there was a feeling of disconnect. I just didn't feel right being there. And it wasn't a logical thing necessarily. It was more just some, a voice within me just said, go to Bali. So, I, I kind of ignored the, I'd had this little niggle and I'd ignored it and then it got stronger. And one day I just said, okay, I'm going to go to Bali. And then I booked a a plane ticket for three weeks after that moment. So it was three weeks from deciding to just coming here. Yeah. Wow. There was, you did not wait. Not really. No. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. That's not a whole lot of time to make a plan. (laughs) <laughs> no but then i don't necessarily think you need plans all the time you just i yeah. just knew it was the right i just i knew it was just what i needed to do and i didn't even know why so some people would ask me well, why are you going and i would say well i just feel like that's where i need to go <laughs> and so how long have you been there now um 10 weeks and how's it working out it's great. <laughs> um, I, you know, I've moved around a little bit because I wanted to experience, because I haven't lived here. I haven't, I, I wanted to experience different parts of the island because yeah. there are lots of different sides to Bali. 
And I don't think you know until you're in a place and you're living there actually what it's like and what fit. Again, I, I'm very much led by what, how I feel. So even when people ask me, how long are you going to be there? I say, I don't know. Mm. Or where are you going next? I say, I don't know. Because no. I don't know because I haven't got to that point where, so I will stay in Bali as long as I feel I want to be in Bali. Um, but it's beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing island. It has the energies are really strong here. Um, there, th- th- there's stuff just seems to like emotional, spiritual stuff just seems to happen. Um, hmm. And in terms of, it's it's very difficult to explain, but it's it's almost like everything is amplified. Wow. Um, and um, I've had lots of kind of powerful insights, powerful spiritual experiences and all sorts of things since I've been here. But it is, um, I think it's quite a special island and it has a beautiful energy and the people are beautiful. And it's just so, it could not be more different to London. It is literally <laughs> the, it's literally the opposite, particularly in terms of, <laughs> the people and the way that people view the world. How so? It's just very different. Well, what I found personally being in London, and I think this might be the same in, in most cities, is there's very much a, a feeling of um, materialism. So it's very much in London, I had this feeling, it was very much about you know, what you can get like can, what you can buy, how much money you have, how much things you can accumulate, right? It's this kind of materialistic Western modern um, lifestyle and a lot, of, a lot of stress, a lot of stress, particularly in the city. And I found a real uh, lack of presence because everybody seems to be preoccupied with being stressed and and working hard and all these other things that that they're dealing with um and here it is totally the opposite and another thing actually in london as well i i I noticed was a lot of isolation Hmm. so Hmm. people are feeling lonely and isolated even though you're surrounded by millions of people london feels very it feels quite lonely. It feels like there's no, there's a, there's not really a sense of community and people really caring about each other. Wow. And, and, and we learned, the, and we it's learned the opposite. In, in Sardinia. And we learned about that. We learned how that, and this blew me away. This is one of the biggest takeaways that I got from our experience there. Uh, is that loneliness is um, more toxic than obesity and smoking. It's, I mean, it literally kills people. It's, you know, the, 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 actually the impact of, um, we're now seeing evidence that the impact of feeling um, lonely, it actually creates uh, changes in our body at a cellular level. Mm-hmm. It creates stress in our body that is equal to other forms of stress because there's lots of different ways our bodies can be stressed. And loneliness causes a huge amount of stress on our body. This is, this is often why... Um, you know, people when they become older and particularly when they finish work, when they stop working and they retire and then they, their health starts to decline because often it's that not being around those people anymore, like and not being part of something that you, you know, like when you're at work um, and often you become a bit more isolated, you become a bit more lonely and that's often what causes the downturn in people's health so it is it is a huge problem and i found i observed it and experienced it for myself a lot in in london and it's so strange how you can be surrounded by millions of people and yet just feel so kind of lonely and uncared for almost you know it's 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 and and i would speak to many people out and about in london of all ages you know 20s 30s 40s 50s all telling me they felt the same thing they felt this 
this loneliness and this kind of these this feeling of almost disconnection and uh yeah and then in bali it's literally the opposite wow. in every way well yeah well that's very beautiful. interesting it is and i look forward to, to learning more uh from you as your journey continues to unfold now you mentioned mm -hmm. uh stress a few times and that is the other subject that i wanted to uh, discuss with, with you, yes all right because my work is all about mental toughness uh i love that in your so it's the fifth episode uh that is um entitled three types of stress damaging your awesomeness and i love that <laughs> that's, that's cool damaging your awesomeness now but in it, you said something that I wrote down uh, because I love it a lot. Two things, actually, that I, I love that you said. One is stress makes us fat, sick, and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you said it. Uh, and, and the other thing is that stress doesn't happen to us. Stress doesn't happen to us. Mm. Right? So when, whenever, yes. so as a mental coach, I'm like, t I'm so dialed in to the language that people use, right? And, um, and, and I really like to um, shine light on the distinction between victim language and ownership language. Yes. And our cultures uh, really promote a lot of victim thinking. Oh, yes. That's a stupid understatement, but you're right. So um, like, like for even for example, this, the sentence, Oh, that, that, that really stresses me out. That sentence can never be true. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because that thing outside of me, whether it's a human or a circumstance, can't do that to you. Can you please in your, from your expertise, elaborate upon that? Yes, absolutely. I think, I mean, for me, this has been one of, in terms of my journey, this has been one of the greatest shifts that I've actually experienced myself. Right. And it's, uh -huh. you know, and it's, yeah. Um, and I completely uh -huh. agree with you. I think that a lot of it is, it's the language that people use. It's very disempowering. And there's almost this belief, and I saw this a lot in, in my work and a lot in London, there is this um, almost this belief that stress happens to us. So people will say things like, I've got so much stress in my life, or that thing stresses me out, or even that person has made me stressed. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I think that's a very interesting word that I hear, and I'm sure you do a lot. Something makes me, right. this has made me upset. It's made me stressed. It's made me, you know, frustrated. Yeah, he makes me so angry. We, and, and I think people almost say it, like, without even being conscious about it. It's like we just say it. It's a phrase. Like, oh, this made me this. And it's very disempowering because it's like, I have no control. Yeah. This made me feel like this. And the distinction is that you actually can control and have choice over how you interpret what's happening how you respond to what's happening because stress is a response and i said in the ep that podcast episode stress does not happen to us it happens within us stress is actually a reaction oh that's a, that's, that a, that's happens, the part. yes it happens yeah, within, it's a reaction so it doesn't happen to us. Within us it, it, it ha happens in it, us that's it that's the rest of it it's that's the yeah. there you go it happens within us Yes. Yeah, so if we, if something happens, this is why, for example, you can have one situation happen to two different people. It's the same scenario. Right. And one person has a total meltdown and can't cope. And the other person says, okay. And they take it in their stride. The difference is what you're, how you're viewing it, how you're interpreting it, how you're actually using your mind yeah. in that scenario. You know, you, you also said, I do want to keep the conversation centered around stress, but, but you did also say in that particular episode that we don't get cancer, we develop it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I don't want to, so, so, um, 
uh, we don't get cancer. That, 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 okay. So maybe that warrants a little bit of elaboration as well. Cause yeah, that's, cause that, I mean, cause that's, that's a very paradigm shifting comment. Yes. Um, so we so everyone just says, I oh, think, he got cancer. She got cancer. Got it. Yeah. Okay, and I think cancer. it's just become part of our, I think a lot of these things have just become part of our language. We don't even question them. We just say them. And I used to, you know, but I think particularly when it comes to things like, you know, chronic, chronic illnesses, um, they are not like infectious diseases where we just catch them or we just suddenly get them. They actually typically, in the majority of cases, take time to develop. They actually develop within our bodies over time. It's not something we just suddenly get. The same as it's not something, stress is not something that we just get. It's something yeah. that actually happens. And, and within our bodies, for, if you use cancer as an example, cancer needs a certain environment to develop and to thrive same applies with most chronic illnesses and it's been shown that you know in many many you know studies and there's much evidence to show that pretty much all chronic illnesses start oh the root cause of them it's a fly <laughs> flying around me um <laughs> barley <laughs> I thought suddenly you just got a tikka, yeah. just like an instant. No, this is <laughs> landed right, there, right there. <laughs> um, isn't that a chakra? Is, isn't this a chakra point? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So the the root cause of these things is um, uh, inflammatory, a, a chronic inflammatory response in the body, and inflammation is caused by stress. Um, so that's how everything is all connected. But yeah, so we de yeah. we develop these things. We don't just suddenly get them and i think it's very empowering to realize that because whilst we can't guarantee that we'll never get these illnesses in the majority of cases they are created and developed by various aspects of modern life and the way that we that we live so lack of movement poor diet continual stress stress is the biggest cause of chronic illness Mm. because it creates a certain environment in the body um there's actually a fantastic book called um when the body says no by uh gabor mate and he talks about how stress and past trauma manifests in illness in the body i mean there's many many people that have written books and done lots of work and podcasts and things all about this it's there's huge amounts of information out there when the but body says is, no and what was the name of the author again it's gabor mate so it's g-a-b-o-r and then mate is m-a-t-e okay yeah. um he's actually an addiction specialist but he talks a lot about trauma and stress and the effect on the body but yeah stress the stress is is argued by many to be the main or emotional stress to be the main factor in our development of um, of chronic illness. Did have you ever seen the uh, doc, the Heal documentary? Yes. I know that you're a big fan of uh, a couple of people that I'm also a big fan of um, that were in that movie. You know, the uh, Kelly Noonan Gores, who wrote and directed and produced that movie, is a former Tough Talks guest here. Uh -huh. it's a great interview. You might want to watch that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. She's, she's brilliant. And um, and yeah, you 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 mentioned Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Oh, I love Dr. And Joe. My boy, yes. yeah, <laughs> you know, and my boy, Bruce. I call him Uncle Bruce. Bruce Lipton. Oh, I love Bruce. Yeah. Uh, how do you, again? How do so you? So they all Bruce? talk. They all talk about this stuff. Right. 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 Well, that's what this one is. Yeah. Right. The biology of belief. I call him Uncle yes. Bruce because he just looks and sounds like someone that would be like your perfect cool uncle. <laughs> he's yeah, just, he's just yeah, he's amazing. Like I like him and him and Joe are just amazing. And you know, as you know, they they talk about the power of the mind on on the body and the mind body connection because it is all completely completely connected. So, let, so you mentioned three different kinds kinds of stress. Uh, there, you know, typically I think uh, most, it's 
probably true that most people, when they think of stress, you just think anxiety. Of course. Right? It's just the emotional, emotional stress. Emotional yeah. or psychological yeah, experience psychological stress. stress. Yeah. But there's two other categories that you talk about, which are physical and chemical. Yes. Yeah. So can, can you um, speak to us a little bit about each of those? Of course. Yes. Yeah. So you're right. People, and again, I used to be one of those people. Um, when we talk about stress, it's the, we think about psychological stress. We go, oh, I'm so stressed, you know, and it's that. Uh, um, but actually, um, there are two others, as you said, physical and environmental. So um, physical stress can be things like um, one of the main ones is what we eat. So certain foods that we eat can cause a lot of stress on our, on our bodies. Um, and cause a stress reaction and actually affect what's going on in our bodies at a cellular level. Mm. Um, so there is this element of um, toxicity. Um, so, so when we talk about different stresses, it's almost like they're different, they're different toxicities. And all of those toxicities add up within the body. So yes, we have the emotional stress, but there's also the things like the food, um, Things like actually excessive exercise or doing the wrong kind of exercise for, for, for you can be stressful. So people that are doing like a lot of um, running, for example, if you're doing an hour of running every day, you're doing constant running, that actually puts a lot of, that creates a lot of stress in the body and um, it can be quite damaging. So those would be kind of the biggest ones, but we can also have things like parasites or, you know, overgrowth of certain bacteria and all sorts of different things happening on a, on a physical level, which are causing mm. stress to, to our body. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the environmental stuff, which actually it's, it's not really stuff that we see. So it's probably the one that's most underestimated mm. and, but we have so many sources of toxicity in our environments. So it could be things like pollution from vehicles, um, toxic chemicals from products, from perfumes, from mm. things we put on our skin, from cleaning products, mm. um, electromagnetic fields, so you know, the EMFs. There is toxicity everywhere. And so we almost have these three sources mm. of stresses potentially happening. And so my goal is always to try and minimize those three different areas of stress on the body because when we minimize the stress, we can have a better environment within our bodies and then our bodies can be healthy when we've got, it's almost like, I mean, in the podcast, I talk about, I call it the bathtub of stress. Yeah. And yeah, I remember that. <clears throat> and it's this concept that you have this bathtub and there's all these different taps going into the bathtub and each of the taps represents a different form of stress, like a different toxicity. So if you only have a couple of the taps on and they're on low, you're not going to have a big problem because, you know, the water's going to go down the drain and it's, you know, it's going to be fine. And this is how human, the human body is designed. We're designed to manage some toxicity and some stress. We're designed to process and detoxify. Mm -hmm. But what often happens is more taps get turned on and they get turned on fuller and fuller and fuller. And we have all these different, this build up of all these different toxicities and eventually the bathtub overflows mm. and ruins the bathroom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, and that would be, we need to, yeah. Getting sick. So what, yeah. please finish that sentence. We need to what, because in that analogy, it's like, we need to chill out with, we need to turn the taps down. Um, or we, do we need to, do we need to widen the drain? <laughs> both <laughs> okay so what would widening yeah. a drain uh how would that translate okay into like practically speaking in our lives like what is what is something that i what's something that you practice that would have 
that would have that effect of draining stress from you? Yeah. Well, I think as, as you said, there are two things. So there's, I mean, ultimately the ideal is to minimize any, any stress reactions in our body. So, so, so actually addressing the root cause and actually avoiding the things that may be, that may be causing that from a, um, dealing with things perspective, there's a couple of things. There's, I mean, our ability to detoxify anyway, um, is important and that can sometimes become impaired. So even just doing things like, um, breath work, Mm. Um, limp, uh, movement to get hold the on, body, hold on. Let me, let me, body let me, I want to this know. I want to slow this part yes. down I want to I really this is part here we go uh because this is like where some takeaways are going to occur for for the listeners or the viewers here all right mm-hmm. talk to me about breath work as if I have no clue because I kind of do, don't <laughs> um I don't yeah. know that I've done a whole ton of breath work maybe at some retreats but talk to me about that breath work yeah I mean breathing is a a great way to detox um it's Mm. also a great way to um to actually particularly when you're in stressful situations or or situations where you feel anxious to actually you know you deep breathing you know breathing in there's various different techniques but you know slow deep breathing in and out actually has a physiological change happen in in our body Mm-hmm. And it can calm, you know, particularly if we feel stressed, it actually calms the body down. So and can you give an example of a simple deep breathing exercise? Yes, of course. And there's various ones, but I quite like, there's something called um, box breathing. Box breathing. Box breathing, yes. And um, actually it is the, this actually is used by the, I hope I'm getting this right. The Navy SEALs. Okay. When they're going into situations um, yeah. that are kind of high pressure situations, this is a method that they actually use. Okay. To prepare the, the body and to, and to calm the body. So it's very simple. It's, it's, there's four stages, like four sides of a box. So you, you breathe in, deeply to the count of four and then you hold for four out for four Mm. hold for four so it's just like a box gotcha in hold out hold in hold out hold and just doing that for you know 30 seconds can really calm you down in a situation where you feel anxious and where you're feeling that kind of stress in your body isn't that amazing how could that get any simpler <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know like exactly the, right and i love that like something that's so healing and so infinitely accessible free of course <laughs> you can do it anytime anywhere anywhere you know if you're feeling nervous like say you're going to do a talk or a presentation or anything mm-hmm. you can just go to the bathroom for a minute, lock yourself in a cubicle and just, you know, just do the breathing. It has such I don't know that I really want to effects. practice a whole lot of deep breathing okay. in the bathroom. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is for the people who are like, oh, I don't want to do it in front of, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. But you, can, right, go, you can go, and, I mean, come on, you can go anywhere right. and do it. Sit at your desk, so, so whatever. It's like, so when you do the inhale, are you filling your lungs? Yes. It, it, okay. So it's important to do it deeply because this is another reason why a lot of us are, are feeling anxiety. We don't breathe properly. Mm. So most people are shallow breathers. They're breathing from here. Mm. They're breathing from their, from their chest. Mm. Actually, um, you want to breathe from your belly. Mm. And, okay. and sometimes for people, it could, this can take a little bit of practice because if you've spent your lifetime shallow breathing in your chest, It can be like weird to suddenly start taking in these full breaths. Um, But you want to like breathe in so the tummy expands. You know, if you see a baby breathing, their tummy just goes, you know, Mm -hmm. because they're breathing deeply. And we're born with that natural ability, but we learn over time when we're stressed, we just, we kind of close up and we have this Mm. like 
shallow breathing and that's what mm. and that's become the norm mm. for many people so just to breathe in from the stomach and then from the chest so it's mm. almost like a two stage you stomach and then chest you fully breathe in and that means that you're flooding the body with air mm. and then you're holding and then you're releasing and as you're doing that you are calming the nervous you're deactivating the nervous system because the nervous system becomes like ah, when we're wow. feeling stressed and you're just deactivating it and literally having a physiological effect on the body and of course yeah. that then affects your mind right because it's all totally connected that's great that's a great reminder i, I actually as i'm listening to you i'm remembering um as a kid i was an actor and some of the plays involved singing mm -hmm. and they would teach us that and i, I remember they called it diaphragmatic breathing yes and to enunciate to yeah, breathe all the way in like that and to enunciate just sing from there or if even not if we're not singing just to to speak from that because that has your voice be louder and and better on stage that's cool so yeah. what's so sticking with the analogy of the tub we've got multiple we live in a world where there are multiple taps in other words multiple sources of the different kinds yes. of stress for us ideally we will minimize that but also then we there are practices like like the breath work that you just described for us yes uh, there are things that we can do that would expand that would open the drain so that the stress moves give yes. us something else what else is something that you practice that is a de-stressor meditation has got to be my number one and that links to i mean that links to the breath work because okay. you know doing breath work and meditation um but meditation is uh it's a light meditation literally saved my life like meditation is really yeah just the that's, best a, thing. that's a big it's that's a big the, it's just <laughs> it's just the best thing ever for i believe for um for managing stress and for, for minimizing the effect of, okay. of stressors on, on our body and our building our resilience. It builds our, you know, our resilience to, to these, these things. Um, yeah. Okay. So how did, how, if you're willing to elaborate or tell us or give us a little bit of the backstory there, how did meditation save your life? <laughs> well it's quite a long, <laughs> it's quite a long story um but in in short um a couple of years ago i i experienced a huge amount of trauma um i my life changed in every way you could imagine um i lost pretty much everything that i had and i was in a situation where I mean, it was deep trauma and it was so bad that I, I didn't even want to live anymore. Um, because when so many things happen in one, literally in one go, you know, it is for most people, it's just overwhelming. And I was in this situation where I was like, I can't cope. I literally can't cope. And I hadn't really been massively into meditation at that point. But I really started to begin a very, I would say, very spiritual journey because I felt like I was at this, I was almost at this crossroads where I thought I can either go down one route or I can actually go down a different route. And I discovered meditation and I started really getting into things like breath work and sound healing and all these natural things that have been used for thousands and thousands of years. Um, and really going within and and um, starting to to learn about myself and get in touch with my heart and all of those different things and meditation was a huge having a meditation practice um, allowed me to do that and it had a huge impact on on my life so do you consider the breath work a form of meditation um not really i i see it as breath i see it as breath work and as part 
and as part of it. Um, Great. And there's obviously lots of different types of lots of different types of meditation. Yeah, and I want to ask you about that in a second. Which are the ones or the one that you practice? But tell me about sound healing. Um, I mean, I'm not. I don't really know a huge amount exactly about why it works. Uh, there's no way that works, that's true. You know a huge amount about everything. I, oh yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but look, sound sound vibrations i don't know if you've ever seen um there's been there's lots you can go on youtube and there's lots of videos that show um water or sand um uh, there's a good one with sand actually on a um like on a um it's like a sound plate Mm. and they put different sounds through it different vibrations of sound and it forms the most beautiful, oh, amazing shape. I have seen that, like on a drum yes. skin or something. Yes, but right. they use this special plate and okay. they put this sand on it and, yeah. and they've done it with, with, with um, liquids and other different things and, and also um, water so yes. that you can, you can see the impact of different um, frequencies, like different sound frequencies on what actually happens to water. So if you speak to water, it mm. changes the water. Yeah. And this yeah. has been proven scientifically. Yeah. That, that, so, guy, that yeah. Japanese guy that writes all about that, like Matsu, I can't remember his name, but he's written a lot. He's done tons of research on that water. Oh, work. I think I know who you mean. Yes. And, I, I, yeah. I'm spacing on the dude. It was, I think it's with the letter M, his last name, but I'm not positive. Uh, but yeah, I remember, I can't remember his name, but I can remember the, the science that he references. Like there's a, a glass of two glasses of water from the same source and, and one, uh, they have like a monk bless it. Yes. And then, and, right. And then they take a drop out and they put it on a, like a, a, yes. a, a, a plate to put on a microscope and, and then, then, yeah. uh, and then they have someone else, like some person enraged, someone enraged and interacting right with this water yes. and then they take a drop of that and they observe them under the microscope and you know the 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 monk the blessing drop has like these beautiful snowflake looking crystal uh-huh. and like, in, like formations of yes the structure just like with perfect symmetry like perfection and then the other one is like just looks like death yeah <laughs> i mean it's amazing you literally can see it like this is not weird woo woo stuff right, this is right. like real stuff so energetic sound yeah sound we are energy everything is energy and you know bruce lipton and, and joe dispenza talk about this uh, you know this the effect of sound sound is so powerful and sound healing and sound therapy has been used for thousands and thousands of years um because mm. sound different sound frequencies do change what's going on in our body We've, it's scientifically proven. So, so yeah, I guess that is how it works. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, and mm. it obviously feels nice to listen to those different sounds um, whether it's, you know, Tibetan bowls or gongs mm. or I there's all those. lots, there's lots and lots of different instruments, but it really, you know, and we know, right. Music is powerful. We know that when we listen to a particular song, it makes us feel a certain way like this, yeah. like sound has such a big impact. Um, and, and again, it's something that is natural and has been used for thousands of years. Um, it's all the, it's all the oldies. It's all the old stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. how yeah. they all know? how they know so much? How does ancient yeah. reaches, how did they know? <laughs> yeah. Stuff yeah, the science. ancient like wisdom. The, I love it. The ancient wisdom of the Rishis, like you know, uh, and Ayurvedic stuff, which you're I, you're studying, right? Yes. Ayurveda, Ayurveda. Yes. Yeah, yes. which like quantum physics is now just going. Oh yeah, by the way, the, the two thousand two thousand years ago, yeah, they they were right. <laughs> yeah, and this is what's happening a what lot they in said. science now. Yeah, science mm-hmm. is now, and you know, Joe Dispenza is talking a lot about this. Science is now catching up with what the ancients have known for thousands of years. Hmm. Um, And, you know, even, even go back 10 years ago, meditation was considered a bit of a weird thing. Now Hmm. meditation is just considered kind of like, oh yeah, meditation. Um, And science is now showing the impact 
of things like meditation, the power of the mind. Um, with Joe Dispenza in his workshops, he talks about um, how you know they do scans on people's brains yes. when they're doing these these deep meditations and mm -hmm. show what's changing literally in the brain and the yeah. physiology the physio physiology <laughs> of the brain it can actually change long term there's actual physical changes that happen in the brain just from meditating is there a specific, it's amazing yeah it is amazing and i'm glad that we're finally getting hip to it i do a lot of work with um, yeah the, you know with um some large international companies and one of them in particular salesforce is the name of the company and they're based yes. on their headquarters you're familiar with them I, i've head heard of them yes okay so yeah the enterprise software stuff and they um they're headquartered in san francisco and they have an entire floor dedicated to meditation so that that's happening oh wonderful i know right <laughs> i think that's pretty great so yes. is there a specific a form of meditation that you practice or do you dabble, you, do you, you uh, use different forms? I've tried various different forms because when I first started doing it, I wasn't sure. I knew there were so many different types and I wasn't sure like what, what type was going to work right. for me. Um, I've tried various guided meditations i do a lot of different meditations now but the one that the one for me which you hear is that? like I'm sorry. My, you, you hear that yeah. you hear that speaking of sound yes. <laughs> yeah there's not this there's, there's uh, only i can only hear crickets here that's all that's, <laughs> that's all that i can i can hear oh we lost um, you i don't know where you went the, your oh. image i can't see you anymore we see your name oh, you're back oh. you're back where have i got oh you're back. That's strange. Um, so yeah, so my, my kind of daily non-negotiable, the one I always do is mm. called uh, Ziva meditation. Ziva, um, Z-I-V-A? Uh, yes, it's been created by um, Emily Fletcher. Okay. Who wrote a book called Stress Less, Accomplish More. Mm. And um, it is a form of, um, it's called Vedic meditation and it's true meditation because a lot of, a lot of things which are called meditation are actually mindfulness and mindfulness is very good in the moment. So focusing on your breath or focusing on a candle flickering, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's great. That's great for centering us and for being present in, in the moment. Um, but true meditation is, is slightly uh, is slightly different and um, it kind of uses a mantra. Well, it does, it uses a mantra um, uh, within it and it's not about removing thoughts and clearing the mind, which is what sometimes people think of as, as meditation. Um, it is, uh, and it's a technique that you need to, to learn. Like it's not something I could explain in five minutes. You know, yeah. there is an online program that Emily has where you learn how to how Ziva. to do it and I and I can provide the link for that but it's it's um once you learn how to do it you can do it anywhere anytime because it doesn't require any guidance it's not yeah. something you you know you listen to um it's a technique that you actually learn and uh, Emily explains how it actually undoes stress the effects of stress at a cellular level in in your body wow and the, the changes that it creates in the brain and all of that stuff but that's all you know you can see all of that on the on and the it's website. spelled z-i-v-a ziva meditation z-i-v-a yes um but there's lots and lots and how of long so you said that's non-negotiable that's daily practice for you daily seven that's days a week 15 15 minutes twice a day 15 minutes twice a day wow you can do it anywhere. This is the beauty of it. Like I do it sometimes on in airports, mm. like when mm. I'm waiting for something like it doesn't matter. You can do it anywhere. So, um, so that's kind of my like go to. Mm. And it's also the one that I recommend for all my clients, because I think particularly if you have a very busy job and you've got a lot going on in your life, to say to somebody, oh, start meditating, I'll oh, do an hour a day of this, you know, kind of 
very deep, extreme, yeah. like right, form right, right. meditation. Right. It just doesn't work for right. people. So I find that Ziva is just a really, it's, it's, it's meditation for high performance. So it's really accessible. Once you've learned how to do it, you can just do it anywhere. And that's why I recommend it to my clients. But I do that and I supplement it with various other things like Joe Dispenza has several me- guided meditations oh, yeah. available. Okay. And I like to dabble in, in Joe Dispenza because I think it's powerful. Uh, it's he's, powerful stuff. He's a, he's a badass. I'd love to get him. He on. is, yeah. I, I want to get him on the show too. I actually reached oh, out to him. You know what? I'll do it. And uh, <clears throat> I'm getting Bruce also. I've contacted him and just got a response from, I guess, his assistant or something asking me what the show's about. Wonderful. Yeah, I want to get, I love those guys. Wonderful. So um, uh, I had one more thing to ask you. Uh, it's escaping me now. Um, <laughs> it's run away. <laughs> next time. <laughs> I, think, I think we've oh. covered enough for people with that. Yeah. Oh, one thing I was, I was going to say is that um, in terms of kind of minimizing the stress, I think the, um, for me personally, what has worked um, and what's created a huge shift for me in terms of whether something stresses me out or not um, is my, my um, lack of expectation. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. So, um, I believe, and I know there's lots of other people that talk about this. Um, one of the mind Valley teachers, actually Sri Kumar Rao. Okay. He talks about this. And in fact, one of the mind Valley talks or what it might have even been a fest. Um, one of the talks is about this very topic and he talks about, the real source of stress, the, the root cause of most emotional stress is unmet expectations. This is really interesting. And there's actually a video of him doing the talk, which is online um, on YouTube. And it's maybe a half an hour talk. And he, he kind of lists you, all these different s- forms of stress and says, no, actually, they're not the, they're not the cause of stress. It's actually expectations. I, I'm going to watch that. Will you just spell his name for me? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Shri, okay, so it's Sri Kumar Rao. So S-R-I-K-U-M-A-R-R-A-O. Yes. Sri Kumar Rao. Yes. Okay, I'm going to check that out. That's really yeah, interesting. Yeah, and he's one, one of, my... of the teachers in Mind Valley. He has a he has a, a one of the um, programs is is led by him, uh, which is about resilience, and he talks about this. Yeah. No kidding. That's really interesting because I did another yeah. interview earlier this morning from someone that I met this past summer at a fest, and it's all about resilience. How yes. fascinating. Yeah. So it's all right. about expectations and not having, not having expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, one of my former coaches who, whose name is Steve Chandler is uh-huh. of the belief that it is entirely possible for uh, people to live completely expectation free. I also, I believe that Byron Katie uh, would support that as well. Yes. So that's very interesting. Thanks for suggesting that. I'm going to put that in the show notes and I'm definitely going to look that up and, and watch that. I do remember the question that I had for you that I forgot, which is you mentioned, you know, you use that um, meditation with your clients. You just mentioned your clients. Who are your clients? Who do you coach? Because if people are listening to this, someone might want to work with you. Who, who are the people that you work with? Yeah. So I love to work with impact driven people. And the reason for that is number one, I identify with those people. So for me, who I work with, it's very important that I enjoy working with them. You know, I don't just want to work with anybody. Like it's really yeah. important for me to, uh, I'm all about experiencing life and enjoying and loving what I do every day. Mm. So people who are wanting to make some kind of impact in the world, they're mm-hmm. wanting to change the lives of others or they're wanting to change the world in some way. Those are my people. Mm-hmm. And the other reason is that I love working with those people or that I want to continue to work with those people is I believe that if I can help those types of people to break free from their limitations, whether it's the physical, emotional, mental, 
spiritual, whatever kind of health limitations they have, then I indirectly make a huge impact because mm. if that person then goes on to change millions of lives because I've helped them to be their best self, mm. that to me is so powerful. It's, and it, it literally gives me goosebumps to think I can power the impactors. I can give the impactors more um, ability yeah. to make their impact. And it's this, this butterfly effect that, mm. that then happens. So um, I just love that. And I also find those, you know, those kinds of people are, they are just so, they, they have their purpose. They're so committed to making change in the world. And it's, it's just, it's, it just feels so good to kind of be part of that and, and to help those people. So, yeah. So you're in the middle of a rice field in Bali. I presume you use Skype or Zoom or something with your clients? Yes, Zoom. Yeah. Zoom. Yes, I use that. Zoom. And that's Good. what enables me to yeah. yeah, literally be in the middle of a rice field and still, in Bali and still be able to speak coach to people all, and, all around the or world. Or do podcasts and videos and, and podcasts. Like all different yep. things. Yeah. So, uh, so your website is, your middle name's in it, right? It's, it is, yes. Laura, it's Laura Jane Bolton. Laura Jane, just no dots, just Laura Jane Bolton? Yes, all one, Laura all Jane Bolton. One, Laura Jane Bolton. Dot com. com. Yeah. Yeah. And, Laura and, Bolton was taken already. So I couldn't get that domain name. I had the same problem. <laughs> so I thought I'd put my middle name in. Good for you. I, I, had, the, I had the same challenge with, uh, I wanted chrisdoris.com, but um, he's a real estate agent in, in Alabama. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> and he won't, he won't give that up. <laughs> he won't give up the yeah. URL. So it's christopherdoris.com. But anyway, yeah, yeah that's we great. Your website's awesome. There's so much great information just even, even even there. And I hope you will put the link soon to your podcast on the website. Uh, and, and I just want to reiterate uh, to, to those watching and or listening that um, Laura's podcast is incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. Such an incredible wealth of information on all the, the, the you know, the, the branches of, of health, you know, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. You, you my friend, uh, from the moment I met you, I noticed your incredible vibe. And I just want to say thank you uh, for the way that you show up, for um, the, the level of commitment that you demonstrate and passion, and uh, for, for, for making the world a better place. Thank you. And likewise to you, Chris. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for making time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Some people just know a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff. I'm so glad that I asked her how much time she spends reading. And I forget what she said, like thousands of hours, but I mean, she's training herself to understand physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health. That's a lot of, that's a lot of wisdom, a lot of info. And, you know, I was not blowing smoke either, you guys, when I, um, when I was complimenting her for the thoroughness of her podcast episodes. So check it out. I mean, it is just like, it, it, just a, a well, a, a wealth of um, true value and like practical applications like you know, diet stuff and meditation stuff and emotional practices and um, and physical health. So uh, I was so glad to have her. Um, I learned a lot. I didn't know what box breathing was. Uh, I never heard of Ziva meditation. I can't wait to look that up. I certainly want to watch the video she referenced on Living Without Expectations by Sri Kumar Rao. Actually, she didn't say it's about living without expectations. She said that, as, that this guy's philosophy is that stress comes from unmet expectations. And, and I, I can't wait to check that out. That's fascinating. So check out her website. Again, laurajanebolton.com. I'll put it in the notes. And uh, follow her on Instagram. And I will also put her Instagram handle in there. All right. Thanks again for tuning in to Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. And... Uh, We'll see you next time. And until then, great miracles.